We have a voicemail number. That number is two one nine two David P. You know, every once in a while we get a clever voicemail from someone who thinks they've really got me. They've really got me. Here is one such voicemail. Let's take a listen and then I'm going to address the substance. Here we go. Hey, David, I'm guessing you won't air this question because you're afraid to answer it. I am not afraid to answer it. I am airing it right now. Please proceed. But my question is, should we allow gay conversion therapy if we allow trans affirming care? Oh, after all, gay conversion therapy doesn't require anybody to remove any body parts and there's no chemical injection of hormones. And from what I understand, it's voluntary. So I think it's hypocritical for liberals to say that they want trans affirming care, but not gay conversion therapy. They say gay conversion therapy is dangerous. So I'm curious what your thoughts would be on that, or if you're actually, my guess is you're, you probably won't answer the question. All right. right. This guy thinks he's got me so dead to rights that I just am not going to tackle this question because obviously there's no sensible way to answer it. So here's a super simple answer. Question is, how can someone be for gender affirming care and against gay conversion therapy? The gender affirming care sometimes involves medication. It sometimes involves surgery, whereas the gay conversion therapy or reparative therapy, as they sometimes call it, insane name, doesn't involve any of that. So what's the difference? Well, let's start with the obvious difference. Gender and sexual orientation are two different things. So at the top, we're talking about two totally different things and we have to treat them individually. Gender affirming care is supported by major medical organizations, including the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the World Health Organization. Uh, gender affirming care is recognized as effective and necessary medical response to gender dysphoria. Gay conversion therapy, also known as conversion therapy or reparative therapy, lacks any scientific validation, is broadly condemned by the very same medical and psychological institutions that say gender affirming care seems evidence based. And studies regularly show attempting to change someone's sexual orientation is not only ineffective, but it can be extremely harmful. Gender affirming care is provided with the consent of the patient, guardians or parents in the case of a minor. The idea is let's reduce psychological distress. Let's improve quality of life. Conversion therapy often is targeting vulnerable LGBTQ youth. It sometimes is pressured or forced by guardians or cultural expectations or religious bodies. It inflicts harm. It doesn't alleviate harm. The goal of gender affirming care is let's support and affirm an individual self identified gender identity. Let's be positive. Let's let it's a self affirming action. The conversion therapy seeks to deny, suppress, and, and, and quite frankly, denounce in a way an individual sexual orientation or gender identity. It's sometimes used to try to talk people out of that as well. Now, could it be that someone is confused about being trans? Sure. Is it rare? It seems to be pretty rare, but it, it does happen. Sure. That doesn't really prove anything and it doesn't really bridge the laughable gap between the validity of gender affirming care and the absurdity of gay conversion therapy. So there's no gotcha here. There's no reason I'd be scared to talk about this on the show. Now, I am very open to the idea that there is an element here of individuals who are struggling with something in their lives and their belief about what the solution is gets drawn to something that is in the media. I don't want to make any offensive comparisons, but what I will tell you is I've known people who in times of difficulty started to believe that their diet was the problem and they started fixating on extreme diets. They went full carnivore. Then they went fruits and nuts only. Then they went raw only. The diet was never the problem. These were unresolved issues that they had that were more suitable for therapy than for anything else. Is it possible that some folks who come to believe that the issue is that they are trans is the solution? And it, it really is not. It does sometimes happen. 
And this is part of why the standard of care when it comes to gender affirming care goes through psychotherapy. And that's one of the great things about it. So the comparisons, the analogies, they don't make any sense. It's not a gotcha. It's quite frankly a, a question that's been answered many times before. All right, we've got a great bonus show for you today. Duke University graduates, some of them walked out ahead of Jerry Seinfeld's commencement address. Why? You can probably guess. You can probably guess. Uh, there is a new study about the benefits of writing by hand as better for thinking and learning than typing. Why? What is the deal with it? We will discuss on the bonus show. And mass shootings are also down 29% from last year, year over year. What's the cause? What's going on with that? We will discuss all of those stories and more on today's bonus show. Oh, the bonus show where you want to make money. Yeah. Everybody else that makes money to fund themselves is bad. Sure. All of those stories and more on the bonus show. Get instant access by signing up at joinpacman.com. I'll see you then. We'll be back tomorrow as well.